What is going on you guys? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Today we're going to be installing a second NVMe SSD on the Alienware Aurora R11. Unfortunately there is only one slot on the MOBO or motherboard for this so we are going to use an adapter that is linked in the description below and I'm going to walk you guys step by step on how to do this to your own R10 or R11. Let's get it. First things first guys, we're gonna go ahead and turn off the Alienware R11. Obviously you wanna be completely powered off and disconnected from power before taking the case apart and doing any kind of work on it. Alrighty guys, so the tools and components for this install, we are gonna indeed need a screwdriver Phillips head. We are gonna need a small motherboard Phillips head screw. And then of course you're gonna need your NVMe SSD. Now this is the Sabrent Rocket. I chose this for a reason. To my knowledge, this is the fastest NVMe SSD on the market. It's faster than the Samsung Evos which were the fastest for a long time. This thing is pretty much uh, the bee's knees and the mule's nips, so to speak. This gets 5,000 megabytes a second down and 44 up. That is the maximum that you're gonna experience if your motherboard can support that speed. Uh, that's so fast that they recommend getting a heat sink on here, which luckily this kit does include because when it's reading or writing that fast for a sustained period of time, like a large file, for example, it actually gets quite warm. And then of course, you're gonna need a M.2 NVMe 2 PCIe 3.0 adapter as the Alienware R10 and R11, the MOBO or motherboard on there only supports one NVMe. So if you bought your R11 like I did with an NVMe SSD, but then you have a second one that you want to pop in there or you want to upgrade, but you don't want to have to uh, basically un to reinstall Windows with a fresh start because your boot drive is the NVMe SSD. The only way to do that is with an adapter. So the NVMe SSD, as well as this adapter, is going to be linked down there in the description below. All right, the unboxing knife we're using today is the Wartech USA. I feel like we've been using this one a lot here recently. I can't find a lot of my other unboxing knives, but this one always gets the job done. Gets the job done, ladies. So in the adapter, you are gonna have a couple of things. You're gonna have a little Phillips head screwdriver. You're gonna have a customer service cards telling you if you have any issues to contact customer support. You are gonna have uh, four Phillips head screws for tying this down to the motherboard. Um, I already have this one here, so I was just gonna use that, but that's cool that they include that. You have the actual adapter inside of a static bag, static sensitive bag, so that's cool. You have the heat sink, which is applied with a uh, thermal adhesive on there. It's not thermal paste, but it's like a, a, a double layer. It's like a double-sided tape that's thermally conductive. So that's what you're gonna use for that. And then also you have a full size and a compact back plate for your case. And then of course you have your instruction manual. And I'm a bit of an instruction manual snob as you guys know. So I do like this large font. English is the primary language. It does have color. It does have full color pictures. So I like this a lot. Alrighty guys, to pop the side panel off of your case, if you have an R10, R11, or any of the Alienware PCs that use this case or chassis as Alienware likes to call it, you're gonna press up right here and right here. You're gonna remove this Phillips head screw right here, which is gonna allow you to pull this lever out, which is going to pull a mechanism in here, which is gonna allow you to get the side panel off. Don't wanna lose this screw, so I'm gonna set it aside. Give her a quick jerk, a little Caribbean jerk, there we go. And then pull up. Up and away. All right, sweet. I'm gonna go ahead and swivel the PSU or power supply unit out of the way. Before you do that, you wanna just unplug your physical hard drive if you do have a mechanical hard drive right up front here, because when you swivel this out, it's actually just gonna pop this off anyway, or it might bend it and cause damage. So just make sure you pop that off and kind of tuck it back in there. Good enough. And then you're just gonna, sure enough, swivel the PSU out to the side. Now you gotta use a little muscle and we wanna make sure that none of your wires are getting yanked out or anything like that. So to be 110% honest with you guys, I don't think I'm gonna use either of these back plates to be honest. Because the NVMe SSD is super, super light, you're not really gonna get any sag from it or anything like that. It's not like you're gonna get GPU sag because this is like a hefty graphics card, obviously a 3080, so it has the support brace in here to keep it from sagging, uh, basically pulling down on the motherboard on the PCI slot. But this is like 
super light. The NVMe is super light. So I honestly might just seat it in there and have it held in there strictly by the, the, the card or the uh, PCI slot actually grasping onto it. We'll see. I'll check on it probably after a week or so and see if it's sagging at all, which I don't think it will. But all right. So to install the NVMe into this adapter, you want to loosen this Phillips head screw first. Whoa, my goodness gracious. Okay. Then you want to drop it on the floor. Make sure you get plenty of dog hair on it. Now you're going to line up this notch on your NVMe with the notch right here on the adapter and you're going to slide her on in might have to go in a bit of an angle and you want to make sure that it clicks in so it's properly seated like that you heard a little snap and it's kind of holds it up like that that's what you want and now you're going to hold it down and you're going to screw that phillips head screw back in now you don't want to over tighten this or anything you want it snug but you don't want it over tightened all right, now you're gonna flip it upside down like that and you're gonna line up these slots with your PCI slot. I'll try and get a good a good uh, angle in here, but it's very difficult because it's very tight in here with the GPU installed. You can remove your GPU, but you can actually do this without uninstalling your GPU. All right, so right here, this is the slot that we're gonna be inserting this into. You are gonna flip it upside down like, uh, like this. No, I'm sorry, like, yep, yeah, like this. Um, now, if you were using this back strap, then it would be like, if you're using this uh, adapter, it would be like that. But again, this is so light that I'm, I don't really foresee a need for that even. Oh, no, no, no. We need the, we need the heat sink on here, boys. You were just going to let me install this thing without the heat sink, weren't you? Come on, guys. You're going to use this thermal conductive double-sided tape to latch this bad boy in place. Perfect. Not bad, not bad. Now, Sabrent also does sell their own heat sink, but it's like... 15 or $20 just for the heat sink. And this adapter, this entire adapter with the heat sink was like 13 bucks. So that's up to you if you want to do that. I'm cheap, so I don't. <laughs> I mean, I say I'm cheap as I'm working on a R11 with a 3080 in it. All right. Um, and then you're going to pop this on the top of your NVMe SSD. Bam. She's heat synced. Yay. I don't know how much that's actually going to lower cooling, but... If it can help at all, that's good. And you're gonna line up your your slots, your schlotskis. And again, this would be much easier removing the GPU, but it's also an extra step and again, kind of lazy. I don't wanna do that. Perfect, so seats right in there like that. So we might need to remap the drive and uh, format it so it is actually recognizable by your Windows 10. However, this is coming directly out of my last PC, so it's already uh, mapped as a drive. It's already been giving a name. Uh, it's the G drive, and I just called it like uh, extra game storage or something like that. And so this should just transfer right over. It's already formatted and everything. It has 931 gigs of usable space on it now. So we'll see if it recognizes. If not, I'll walk you guys through uh, on a screen recording over here how to remap a drive, a new hard drive, whether that's an SSD, an NVMe, or a mechanical. All right, boys, so as you can see, it is now glowing red in there. It is getting power and whatnot. And if we come over here, you can see I now have another drive. It's the Rocket One Terabyte in VME. So now I have my boot drive over here, which will about, which is about to get uh, quite a bit smaller because I am gonna be transferring a lot of games and stuff that I have over to the one terabyte. And then this is my slow storage over here, my legacy, if you will, my mechanical hard drive, which I don't recommend launching any games off of or definitely having your operating system on. This is more for just like bulk storage of photos or videos or something like that. Sorry if my audio quality is not as good. It's I'm on the internal microphone of the iPhone XR now. I'm not plugged into my microphone. All right, so that's all there is to it, fellas. If I can do that and I have half a brain cell, you should be able to follow this YouTube tutorial and get it done yourself. What I don't really like about the R11, there's not a lot I don't like about the R11. Like in general, I love the PC. However, one of the things I don't really like is the motherboard only has one NVMe slot. And then even if you use this method here with an adapter, you can only have a maximum of two. Now granted, I mean, that is a lot of storage. If you get like two, two terabyte NVMEs, which that'd be kind of pricey, but if you do that, you have four terabytes, plus you'll probably also have a mechanical and maybe an SSD in there. You can get a, get a lot of storage in there, but but technically, I mean, this has room for one three and a half inch mechanical, two 2.5 inch SSDs, and then the one NVMe, which isn't bad. I mean, but I, I just wish they had one more NVMe slot or extra PCI slot. So if you wanted to do this adapter method, you could get more S, uh, NVMEs in there, but it's not being petty or nitpicky, but it's also not like a huge issue either where it's like, 
something like, oh, I'm not going to get the R11 because it can only have one NVMe on the motherboard or two with an adapter. That's, I don't think that's enough to like make or break a decision to get this PC, but just something I want to mention to you fellow R11 or potential future R10, R11 owners out there that share the motherboard and case on this PC. If you enjoyed this video, it was beneficial for you guys, helped you to do this on your own PC. Liking this video helps it to get seen by more people so this information can help them as well. Subscribe for more tutorials like this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.